In this video, we're going to take a look at some common data structures in Redis like string, list, set, hashes, sorted set. And then we're also going to take a look at how we can be able to set expiration on keys, which is a very important feature in Redis, and to keep our data and cache up to date. And for this tutorial, we're going to use Redis Insight for demonstration, but you can also follow along this video using the Redis CLI, which is a command line interface as well. And the benefits of using the Redis Insight is that not only we can be able to run Redis command, we can also be able to visualize the data that we store inside of the Redis cache. And of course, in the future, I'm going to make more videos on Redis. So if you're interested in this type of content, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to this content for more videos like this. And of course, the timestamp is in the video description. So feel free to jump to any section you like. All right, so what we're going to do first is we're going to create a Redis account. So I'm currently on the redis.io try free. So once we have the account, so here we're going to click on the new database and it's asking us some configurations on how we want to configure our database. So in this case, the free, the free version is just going to be using the cache. Database version is going to be paid. So you can see here the minimum for the 250 megabytes is going to be $10 per month. So we're just going to use the cache version and the free version is only 30 megabytes. And if you click on the compare use cases, you can see that the difference is that cache, you cannot be able to persist the data, whereas database, you can be able to persist data. And then for cache, there is eviction policy. In this case, we're using the least recently used. And then for database, you can see that it has multi availability zone, whereas cache is there's only one zone. So for database, we're just going to provide Redis movie for just demo purpose. And then here I specified the cloud vendor, and then we just provide a region name. In this case, I'm just going to click on US West 2. And then I'm going to select the cache type. In this case, it's going to be Redis stack. And then we're just going to click on create database. So once we have our database created, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the public endpoint. In this case, we're going to connect. And there's a couple ways we can be able to connect this database. Uh, one is using the CLI and the other one is using the Redis client. And we can also be able to use a GUI or a graphical user interface by installing the Redis Insight. So here you can see I click on the install. All right, so once we have our Redis Insight installed on our local machine, so in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to add a Redis database. So to do so, what we're gonna do is we're going to copy the public endpoint and then just paste it to the host. And this will basically fill out the ports, the database alias, and then we also need to copy the username. So the username is default. And then there's also a password. So let's take a look. This is the password that's generated. And then here we can be able to test the connection. You can see that connection is successful. And then we're going to add Redis database to our local machine. All right, so now what I wanna talk about is how we can be able to add data to our Redis cache or Redis database. In this case, we're going to go over some common data structures like strings, hashes, lists, sets, and sorted sets in this section. So here you can see we have our database and we're going to click it and you can see that we don't have any data here, right? So there's a couple ways we can be able to add keys manually inside of the GUI. So we click on the GUI here and then this will prompt a form and we just simply just fill the data that we want to add here, right? So given key, this is the corresponding value. Or we can be able to use the workbench here and then be able to execute some commands to add values. So here we're going to start with the strings. So for strings here, basically we can be able to store strings or text or numbers, images, serialized objects, and other kinds of informations. And this is pro probably the simplest data types that we have in Redis. We can be able to set a key and value pair by using the set keyword. And here we can be able to run this. So here you can see we set the bike one set to demos. And if we want to retrieve the key, we can be able to use the get keyword. So here we're specified that the key is going to be bike one. And then the value here is going to be demos. We can also be able to check to see if it exists. So here I can be able to type exists and we are going to say bike one and this will give us one. So basically one means that it exists and zero mean that it doesn't exist. So here in this case, if I were to say exist, for example, uh, bike at three, for example, you can see that it's zero. In, in this case, it doesn't exist. And we can just use delete keyword to delete that key. And in this case, if I were to delete it, you can see it returns one, which means that it deletes successful. And now if I were to check to see if this exists, um, 
you can see that it is false, which means that it does not exist. And of course, I can also be able to get this. So if I were to run this, you can see that, and here you can see that if I were to get bike one, in this case, it will return us null. And we can also be able to store integer data in a string key. And we can be able to use command like increment or to increment the value by one or increment by, which which allow us to specify how much we want to increment by. In this case, we can increment by two, 10, 20, so on. So far, you can see for this key, it doesn't have any value. And if I were to set this key by 10, you can see that it is set. And if I were to run this again, you can see that it is giving us 10, which in this case it is wrapped in a string format. And I can be able to use the increment keyword to increment this by one. So if I were to run this, you can see that now the value is 11. And if I were to increment this again, you can see the value is 12. And this increment key will also allow us to create this key if this does not have it inside of our cache. So if I were to delete this, and you can see if I were to get this again, you can see that it's null. But if I were to increment this, since this does not have any values or the value is null, then in this case, the value will start with one. And we can also be able to use the increment by keyword, which in this case, we're increment the current value of the bike's total number by 100. So we're expecting the total value to be 101. So you can see that we're increment 100. In this case, the value is 101. And of course, we can also be able to use the decrement keyword. In this case, we're decrement by one. And we can also be able to specify decrement by, which in this case, we're going to decrement the this key by 10. So now you can see that the value is 90. So now if I were to get this one, you can see that the value is 90. And we can also be able to set expiration date for a key. So here you can see this is the key and this is the value. And here, if I were to run this, you can see that we were able to set a key and we can also be able to use the expire keyboard to set a expiration date for this key. In this case, we're going to set 20 seconds. And if we were to run this and try to run the TTL keyword to check how long we have, in this case, we have 14 seconds left and run this again. You can see we have nine seconds left. And here you can see we have four seconds left. And then here we have negative two. So negative two basically indicate that the key has already expired. So if we want to check this key, if it exists, in this case is zero, which means false. And now if I want to set this key again and try to run the TTL keyword, and here you can see we have negative one, which basically means that this key does not have expiration. And we can also be able to specify not just seconds, but also milliseconds using PX keyword. So here we can see that we, this is the key and this is the value. And this basically means that this key will last one milliseconds. So in this case, I can be able to say that this is going to last for four milliseconds. And we're going to check. So if we were to run this and check this key, you can see now it's two seconds left. Now zero seconds left. And now you can see that this key has expired, right? So PX basically means that this is going to be milliseconds and EX basically means that it will be seconds. So now if I were to run this, you can see four seconds left, two seconds left, one seconds left and now it's gone. And the expiration is two minutes. And now if we were to run this, you can see that we have 110 seconds left and 105. So if we want to cancel this, we can be able to use the persist uh, keyword. In this case, this will cancel the expiration time for this key. And if we were to run the TTL for this key, in this case, you can see that it's negative one. In this case, this key does not have an expiration time. And now let's take a look at hashes, which is basically map that are used to represent objects in Redis. We can be able to create hashes using hset command. In this case, this is gonna be the name of the hashes. And then we have the values and they are basically key value pairs. So this is the key, this is the value. This is the key, this is the value. This is the key, this is the value. This is the key, this is the value, right? And if we were to create this, this is what it looks like. So we have a key and this is the value for this key. And here inside of this object or here inside of this map, we have the key and the value, the key, the value, the key, the value, the key, the value, right? So here what's gonna happen is we're going to run this to get the value pairs associated for this key. We're just gonna use the H get all with the key name. In this case, it's gonna be bike one. And here you can see we have a list of key value pairs. And if we want to get a particular value from the key value pair, in this case, we can just specify the H get with the key name and the key for the map. In this case, the price should be 4972. And here you can see we have 4972. And we can also be able to use the H set command to, to update a key value pair inside of the map. So we have the key for the hashes and those are the values that we want to set for those two keys, model and price. And model is demos. 
And if we were to set this, you can see that if we were to get the whole thing again, you can see that the value has been updated. And of course, if we want to update numbers in ashes, we can be able to use the H increment by. In this case, we can be able to increment the price by 100 and decrement the price by 100. So if we were to run this, you can see the value is 3,100. And if I were to decrement this, you can see now the value is just 3,000. So now what I want to talk about is the list data type in Redis. And we can be able to implement the stack, which is last in, first out, or Q, which is first in, first out data structures in Redis. And we can be able to use the commands like right push, left push, to push elements on the left side or the right side of the list. Also given the length of the list and also retrieve a range of elements, remove and get the left element from the list, remove and get the right element on the list. So for demo purpose, in this case, we can be able to create a list with two elements. So in this case, we're going to push the blue and white to the list for the key bike colors. And if you were to run this, you can see we have two elements added to the list for the bike colors. And then we can also be able to use the keyword L range, which can be able to get a entire list of elements by specify the start index and the end index. And negative one basically means that the last element in the list. So if we were to run this, you can see that we so far we have blue and white. And then we can also be able to prepend a new element on the left side of the list. So basically we're adding red at the start of the list by using L push. And then if I were to and then if I were to do L range again, you can see that we have red, blue, white, which in this case red is a pen on the left side of the list. In this case we can also be able to delete this key by using the delete keyword. And if we were to run L range again, you can see that we have an empty list. And we can also be able to add multiple elements. In this case, we can be able to use R push and each value will be separated with a space. And if we were to add this and get L range again, you can see that we have red, blue, white, yellow. And like I said earlier, we can be able to get a range of elements in the list by specify the start index and the end index. In this case, we have the start index and the last element of the list. In this case, is negative one. In this case, I also can be able to specify the start index to be index one, in this case, blue, and the end index as index two, which is white. So we're expecting to get blue and white. So here we have blue and white from the entire list. And we can also be able to use negative value to specify the last element from the list. In this case, negative two is second last and negative three means it's third to the last elements in the list. So if we were to do two, you can see that we also get the same result as blue and white. And of course, we can also get the length of the list using out length. In this case, we have total four elements in the list. So, so far we have the L range. In this case, we have red, blue, white, yellow, and we can use L pop to remove the first element in this case, the red. And if we were to get a list again, you can see that we have blue, white, yellow. And we can be able to remove the rightmost element, in this case is yellow. And if we were to run this, and here you can see we have blue and white. So we can also be able to use set, which is very similar to lists, which sets they are unordered and each element are unique. So here you can see we can be able to use as add as remove to add or remove elements in the hash set in a set or using s is member to see if an element is, is in the set or we can be able to use as members to get members or elements in a set or we can be able to join multiple sets together using s union. So to create a set we can be able to use s add which in this case we specify the key and then the value. So here you can see we're trying to add those four elements to a set. And since all the elements in the set is unique, in this case, we're just going to only have one bell. And if we were to run this and try to get all the members in a set, you can see that we only have three elements. And we can also be able to use as remove to remove element in a set. In this case, this is the key and this is the value. And in this case, we don't have this member in the set, so this will not be removed. So you can see that this did not get removed because this element does not exist in a set. And if we were to get the members in the in this set, you can see that we only have two elements left. And we can also be able to use the is, is member to see if this element exists in the set. So we do know that reflector do exist, but this one does not. So if we were to run this, you can see that we do have yes for the reflectors and this value does not have. So in this case it's false. And if we were to get all the elements that we have inside of a set using the S members, in this case, we only have two elements and we can also be able to use S union to merge or combine two sets together. So here you can see first we're adding a new set called special add-ons. And here I'm just going, here I'm also just going to add the reflector as well. 
And if we were to use the S union, what's going to happen is we're going to get those two and those two displayed in the result. So here you can see we have only just one reflector since the set only stores unique elements. And we can also be able to use as random to get a random value or as pop to remove a random value in a set. So first we're going to get all the values that we have inside of the set. In this case, we only have two elements. And then, and then we can also be able to get a random value. You see that we can be able to get a random value. And then we can also be able to pop a random value by using the s pop so in this case you can see that we have popped a reflector and in this case if we were to get the set again you can see that we only have one element in the set so now let's take a look at sorted sets which is very similar to set in redis but the difference is that each unique member has a associate score which provide a mechanism for sorting so we can be able to create a sorted set using the z add in this case we're going to we're adding a bunch of unique mem members to the sorted sets with their associate score. And we can be able to use the Z range to get a range of elements in the list. And we can be able to say start with zero all the way to the end or the last element in the list. In this case, you can see we have a total of eight elements inside of our set. And if we want to list out all the elements ordered by the score, we can be able to use Z range by score, negative infinity to all the way to the positive infinity for the scores. So, so in this case, you can see that we have all the members sorted by their scores. And the second one is Allen. In this case, it's 1912, and then so on and so forth, which is sorted by their score. And of course, we can also remove an element by using the Z remove, which in this case, we just specify the value, the member's value. In this case, we can be able to remove that element. By using the Z rank with the with score keyword, in this case, we can be able to get the score for this member. In this case, is going to be 1916. 